Right about the Mill Dungeons, church. That was the first Anglican church, or the first English church, English church in the country. Mm -hmm. So basically, whilst God was worshipped, whilst He sang Hallelujah at first, others died and mourned, cried and mm. And the dungeons we are about to see contained more than a thousand people. At the time? At the time, yeah, when it was filled up to capacity. Mm. And they could stay in there for about three months or more before the next ship arrived. Mm. So we'll go through the mill dungeons. Um, it's a bit sloppy and slippery, mm -hmm. so I urge all of us to take it easy whilst we, we go through the mill dungeons. Okay. Uh, should we mention that uh, these places that we mentioned earlier, they were not uh, really uh, people didn't pay attention to them as real tourist sites, anything like that. So when Ghana in 1992 um, decided that it was going to um, create a festival to try to bring us back together again, which is called Panafest, they were anticipating plenty of the brothers and sisters coming from the diaspora over here to Panafest. They were trying to figure out what kind of monument, what kind of monument. They were trying to figure out in 1992 what could be done to make a monument of what this place represents. Because nothing here shows our monument. Ah, yes. This is the whole infamous uh, male dungeon of the Cape Coast Slave Dungeon in Port. And we're just explaining that in 1992, when the government of Ghana decided to create a festival that would be able to try to bring the African family together, those abroad and those at home, were through Panafest. And then Isaac Hayes and Dion Warwick came to Ghana, and they shared that idea with them. And they came into these dungeons for the first time. And Isaac Hayes broke down, Dion Warwick broke down, and they talked about trying to encourage many of the Africans in the diaspora to come home. So. 94 was targeted as the big Panafest festival. And they wanted to put something here monumental that would speak to the atrocities that our ancestors went through. But it was so short that nobody can think of what to do. People said a statue of us breaking chains. Some people said an eternal life. But nobody could really think of what to do. So when the festival was approaching, they just decided to do this plaque and place this plaque as a small monument or a testimony until someone came up with the idea of what would be a meaningful monument to leave here as a testimony. So that's why you got these words here that were put here. An everlasting memory of the anguish of our ancestors. May those who died rest in peace, and may those who return find their roots. May humanity never again perpetuate in such an injustice against humanity. We, the living, vow to uphold this. So that was placed here for Panafest in 1992. And then, in 2009, when the world was shocked with the first elected black president in America, with President Barack Obama, yeah. Ghana only had a two-week notice. <laughs> Ghana only had a two-week notice to say that Ghana was chosen for its first West African stop. Yeah. And people also saying, what are we going to do? What kind of monument can be left? So the plaque on the other side was the plaque that President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama placed with the family. They say they also came through here. So these are really the only two artifacts or monuments that have been placed that have anything to do with those of us from the diaspora and the testimony of our ancestors having gone through the atrocities. This is a real dungeon. This was made to house our ancestors. So watch us. Just a second. Okay. Watch your step. Watch your step. It's a slope. I wish I could see that place. I wish sometime before I die, I can return. But in that hope, it stayed alive in their DNA. And it produced you, and it produced I. That we are here, but we're here because of all of them. And that's why we take an opportunity to call their names out too, to say, I haven't forgotten you because of you. We made it back, and we made it back. So we want to dedicate a moment of silence and call out every name of every uncle, every aunt, every grandmother, every grandfather, every man in the corner store, every woman on the corner store, everybody, every adult that ever lived down and gave you a hand to lift you up, that you made this journey. Let them share this moment with you. It's a spiritual moment, and the vortex is open, but we're back at the scene of the crime. 
where it all began. Of course it began with our capture. Of course it began with the other humiliations. But here was an indelible spot that we knew. Here and all of the other edifices that represent the dungeons along the Gulf of Guinea, along this coast. If it was not this one, it was one like it. Before they were these edifices, they were cages. They built cages on the shores of the ocean before they felt that this was a profitable enough building. And on top of this dungeon, British went to build a church. They said they were Christians. And they called the church SPG, Society for the Propagation of the Gospel. That changed into Anglican Church in this country. Wow. So they were up with their Bible, shouting mm -hmm. hallelujah. And now people were here suffering from it. Here's a urinal that drains you the urine into the sea. Watch your steps, please. Watch your steps,